Hello everybody, welcome back to the Coffee Morning presented by Lavazza. Well, tomorrow we could have a Barty party on Saturday, couldn't we? As Angelique couldn't curb her. It was so good for Carolina. She was, uh, oh, I've messed that right up, never mind. <laughs> what he was trying to say, he rehearsed that perfectly, guys. Dreadful. He went to absolute pot when he was trying to do that. Basically, <laughs> Danny was trying to say, Carolina Piscova is taking on Ashley Barty <laughs> in the women's singles final tomorrow afternoon. This is incredible. I think this is um, close to as good a tennis match as I'll ever play. And I think um, Angie definitely brought it, brought the best out of me today. And it was a, a hell of a match right from the right from the first ball. And I knew it was going to have to be that good just to compete with her. So I'm um, you know, incredibly proud of myself and my team. And, and now we get a chance on, on Saturday to try and live out a childhood dream. I'm so disappointed in myself. It's fine, Danny. It's still coming home on Sunday. It's absolutely fine. You Wait, just how many stay times there. have we rehearsed that? You, yep, Six about times? Ten. <laughs> you stay there and let's talk about exactly what is happening oh dear. for the next couple of days at Wimbledon. We're day 11, yes. so we can excuse Danny because, you know... It's been a long week. It's been a long week. It's been a long fortnight. <laughs> OK, let's talk about Ashley Barty because yes. she quite possibly could be having a party, as you absolutely. tried to tell us. I tried to tell you. I'll get the line up before the end of the show. Everybody loves Ash Barty. I think us Brits here have really taken her, like, under our wing as well. No, or not many, I'm going to say, Australians in the crowd because they can't travel here. We actually did speak to a journalist from Australia on Zoom yesterday, Stephanie Brantz, and she was just saying how much as well all the Australians absolutely love Ash. She's everywhere on the back page of the newspapers over there. Mm. Um, and so they will absolutely be watching regardless of the time difference over yeah. in Australia. There'll be early hours of Sunday morning, very early, I, I think, believe. Yeah, I think we've done the maths, right? <laughs> uh, I've got to say, shout out to all the Australians who were watching yesterday out in force mm. in the comments. We're scrolling through the loads of them. It was uh, probably late evening, wasn't it, by the time we were on air and the early hours by the time she was actually out on court. But my goodness, they were out in force yesterday. And uh, As like they you always say, are. well, they always are, aren't they? But if they can't be here, then this is the next best thing, I guess. But there was a lot of support for her out there yesterday. Yeah, well, I think so. She's just doing like exceptionally well. Obviously, her first time into a Wimbledon final. She's obviously a Grand Slam champion back in 2019 at Roland Garros. And I guess that the talking point is the fact that she's been injured mm. heading into here. And she said openly, I'm not going to hit the panic button, but I love grass. You know, she had a hip injury. She pulled out of Roland Garros. She's been kind of steadily building as the fortnight's gone on. I guess the only thing that really tested her was Carla Suarez Navarro in round one when she actually dropped her only set of the tournament mm. so far. And from that matchup, she's just been going from strength to strength. And I think everyone is just loving watching her and listening to her because her post-match interviews so are brilliant They're as so well. Good. Yeah, I mean, like you say, she, you say she's not really been tested, but. Has she not, or has she just been too good for everybody that she's played? She called the, the quarterfinal um, the as close to perfect a match as she will ever play. And that's kind of what you want to do. You want to you want to basically peak at the right time, don't you? Well, she is doing just that, of course. In the semi-final, she had a former champion here from 2018, Angelique Kerber, and she said that really made her, or Kerber made her play her best tennis as well. Um, yeah, it's e excellent stats here. 88% of first serves won by Ashley Barty in that match there. Had to go for a tie break, didn't it, in the second set, but it did only go to two sets. She mm. didn't even have to push it to three sets and be a little bit more worn out for the final tomorrow. And she only actually she lost one serve during that match wow. as well, even though she did say it was her toughest matchup. Uh, let's talk about, though, who she's going to face. Yeah. Karolina Pliskova, of course, her first time in a final here. She has been at a Grand Slam final before, back in 2016 now at the US Open. She's been a super consistent player, but never got a Grand Slam title mm. under her belt. I guess what she's going to have on her side, possibly her identical twin, maybe at home cheering her on, giving her words yeah. of encouragement. She's obviously a top tennis player herself. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? The contrast in expectations coming in because Ash Barty has spoken very openly about the fact that she wants to win Wimbledon. Mm. Carolina Pliskova was happy to make the second week. Yeah. She's been having a bit of a tough time of late, but she's made it far uh, far further than just reaching the, the second Monday. I think that's, well, I'm going to say it's because she's been going slightly under the radar, playing not on the show court. She has yeah. actually spoken openly saying, I wish I was on the show court. So maybe if it made it the final, she'll get on centre court. Of course, you're playing on centre court tomorrow. Um, but yeah, it's going to be an exceptional final, whatever. And we're going to have a first time champion exactly, here at Wimbledon yeah. the first from one of these two. time since 1977 when Virginia Wade beat Betty Stover that we've had two debutants 
in a uh, Wimbledon final. Yeah, absolutely. I love your stat much. pack there. Danny's there full go. of them. Okay, let's talk about a player who is no longer here at the championships. She did make it through to Manic Monday. Of course, was the 17-year-old American Coco Goff. She's since returned home to America, but she also liked to treat us on social media to where she's been before she ventured home. This is the picture that she popped up here, which mm. says Europe photo dump part one. One. Yeah. And Danny, that got us thinking, didn't yes, it? Yes, it did. Well, we thought, given it's Friday, let's keep those brains sharp. Lord knows I need it <laughs> by the start of the show today. We thought we'd give you a little bit of a quiz because we're all living vicariously through all of our favourite players, aren't we? Because none of us can go on holiday at the moment. So, where is this photograph taken? Not we've a got, clue. We've, I suppose we've narrowed it down to three different countries there you can see on the caption. <laughs> But pop it in the comments if you think you know where in particular Coco is in this photograph. And we will tell you the answer before 11 o'clock, before we're off air. I mean, the fact that she posted it possibly means it's somewhere historic. But I don't know. But we want you guys to have a guess and let us know. OK, Danny, you also have been out and about taking yep. in all kind of the sights and smells of Wimbledon here. Mm. You got to go and, I guess, visit the tennis balls and see yeah. exactly what journey a tennis ball takes in a day. I mean, that kind of confuses me. I can't wait to watch the video at the end of the show yeah. just to see what they go through. Quite a lot, I'm sure. Um, and that got us thinking again, didn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely, yeah. It's, well, I, I was very interested to see exactly what these <laughs> tennis balls go through during the day. We'll show you that later on in the show as well. So again, we're going to test your knowledge because we were in centre court, weren't we, yeah. uh, a couple of days ago. Very big court, very big court. So we thought we'd pose you a little bit of a teaser. How many of these tennis balls could fit into centre court with the roof closed? Obviously, it has a capacity of 15,000 people. That yep. may or may not help tennis you. Tennis balls, though, sure. are a lot smaller than people. <laughs> so it's okay. more than 15,000. <laughs> so how many tennis balls can fit in centre court is the question. It is either A, 5 million, B, 290 million, or do you think it's C, 875 million. All you have to do is give us your answer, A, B or C. Don't worry about the million. A, B or C, comment below and let us know. And again, we'll reveal that answer once we've watched Danny's video at the end of the show. Absolutely, just pop your answer in the comments. While you have a think about that, here's what you may have missed from day 10. Princess Beatrice, amongst those in the best seat in the house in the Royal Box. Nearly 60 years since Billie Jean played in her first Wimbledon semi, 1963. Look at that, I like the, the flying forehand. Now that is one of the great pictures of Wimbledon 2021. Sweet Carolina, for the first time ever, a Wimbledon finalist. It's emotional for lots of people. Wow, I love the emotion there from Pliskova's team going into her first final here at the All England Club. You can see exactly what it means to her. Um, right, Danny, let's go and test our audience knowledge a little bit more. Yeah. We've been doing it. Quiz for question the last number three. Days. Yeah, absolutely. Right. We have been showing you some digital artwork of some different players over the last couple of days. We've shown you Nick Kyrgios, Serena Williams, Steffi Graf, and we've got you to guess, haven't we? Because we kind of animate these pictures, and then there's a tennis ball over the players' faces, and we like to say, who do you think these players are? We have another one for yes. you today. This is the picture in question, but who is the player that this lady, Amelia Noyes, has uh, drawn for us today. Danny, um, you usually give us some clues. Have yes. you got some for us today, please? Absolutely. Well, the last two that we've asked you to try and identify have been current players. So I will tell you that this particular player has not been playing during these championships. They've not been on court. However, okay. however, if you've been paying attention, you will have noticed her around the grounds this week. So she's not been playing, but she has been here in the last week. Has she been working with me quite a lot? Is it Laura Robson? 
Well, you'll have to wait and find out, won't you? Oh, you're testing it's me not there. Laura Robson. Okay, well, whilst you guys think about who that player in the picture is, here you can check out some of the shots of the day from yesterday. Done from Kerber. She said, I can't out hit you. I've got to use some change up. Perfectly measured lob. Oh, that's Yay. gorgeous. The combination. Anticipation and execution from Barty. She was <laughs> she was a step away from the Royal Box. Barty waited until the last second till Kerber had already committed, then she moved to her right. That had to feel good coming off the racket. Oh, that's what you want to see if you're playing in the tiebreaker. Total miss it drops just inside the line, and you'll take these all day long. Two, one, drum set. And this will be interesting. And it was. Oh, thank you very much. Exhibition stuff. Who needs Mansour Barani? Did he actually need to do that? What's he love? <laughs> no, of course not. as well as great guessing from Pishkova, play the percentages. Oh, that is majestic. Pishkova playing careful here. Didn't go for the serves. That forehand on the first point was bottom of the net. And this one, that was a shank before that. This one, again, a very careful ball here. love shots of the day we've got two huge matches to build up to today the men's semi-finals adam hunt has joined us from the wimbledon channel and um, before we get into the matches themselves a word on the makeup of the final four we've got novak djokovic a five-time champion here and then three guys who have never been to this stage before only one of whom has even been to a semi-final of a grand slam mm, well just to give you a sense of, of how big it is for some of these players i look back at the head-to-head -head between hubert hercatch Matteo Berrettini, the first match of the down centre court. They've only played twice before, they split that. And the first time they played was only three years ago, 2018, at the Aussie Open in the qualifying oh, second round. It's not round. even the main so draw. So they didn't even get in the main draw. They were ranked outside the top wow. 128 in the world. That was only three years ago. That's incredible. Only three Wimbledons ago. So, you know, to see them in the main draw, let yeah. alone in the semi-finals, that's how much this means. They've got a shot at getting through to a Grand Slam final. Um, and three years ago, they weren't even in the qualifying. So it really is amazing. Extraordinary, really. So let's go through them in, uh, in reverse order, shall we? Let's start with the, the overwhelming favourite, Novak Djokovic facing Denis Shapovalov. Um, 
Look, tell me why this is not a foregone conclusion for Novak Djokovic. Well, beating Novak Djokovic at a Grand Slam over five sets is, is the Everest of tennis I saw yeah. it described as, and, and that's the best way to describe it. It's not quite impossible, but it nearly is. Yeah. Uh, Shapovalov is going to have to be at his absolute best today. He's going to have to hope that Novak Djokovic is slightly off. Um, I think some things that are in Shapovalov's favour, this is the best we've seen Shapovalov play. He's got so much confidence here at the Championships. Having beaten Andy Murray on centre court, he became a bit of a darling yeah. from the crowd. He was everyone's second favourite, wasn't he, in that match? Um, but then since then, I think everyone's followed him. Uh, and if they didn't know too much about tennis and didn't know him, some of the interviews, the way he's talked on court in the press conferences, he's endeared himself to the British crowd. That's going to help him on mm -hmm. centre court. They'll be behind him. Um, and the other thing is the, the set that Djokovic did drop, the first set of the tournament, was against a lefty and Jack Draper. Now, we were just saying it just made Djokovic yeah. angry and he won the next three <laughs> sets, no problem at all. But he might look at that and say, OK, well, well, Djokovic here at Wimbledon this year has struggled a tiny bit against the lefty. Well, so there's two things you mentioned that I, I would like to get into. Let's start with the lefty thing. How much of a difference does it make? It's a huge difference. Um, we've seen with Rafa Nadal in the past. Um, you know, Djokovic knows how to play mm. against lefties. It's not going to give him a huge advantage, but it just looks different. You don't play against that many lefties. You'd have to look through the top 100, but there's not too many mm. of them. It gives them different angles on the serve. It means they move slightly differently. Um, you're hitting, you know, if you're a righty, your forehand is going, you know, to a different side. It's not going to the side that you would normally think it would be going yeah. to and you were, you were trying to attack the, weak, the weaker backhand side. So that can make it more difficult. Um, and the thing with Shapovalov is he does have a, quite a lefty game. He, he's got a big forehand um, and, and a big serve. And those two tend to be the things, because they're playing more forehands because the, the backhand is going to the forehand, um, it means that they're just a little bit more fine-tuned on, on the forehand side and the serve. So... Um, he has got a, a, a quite a classic lefty game and, and, and he's obviously playing very well here at Wimbledon this year. And then on the crowd, we've, we've seen the crowd really get behind Shapovalov. Do you think that may frustrate Djokovic, will that have an impact or is he just so good at the moment, nothing's going to distract him? Well, I think, you know, he's so good that there isn't going to be too much that would distract him. And I think he's used to it. You know, when he's, we've seen him in big matches in the past when he's played against Federer or he's played against Nadal and the crowds perhaps, you know, they want to see great tennis so they're supporting the overall spectacle. Mm. But often he falls on the wrong side of that, you know, Federer and Nadal fans, uh, the, the number of fans for them is huge. So I think he's just used to it by now. Um, you know, there was that rather contentious question in one of his press conferences yeah. about him playing the villain. Um, and, and, he, you know, I, I, I think that was fairly unfair. That, yeah. that wasn't the way I would describe it. But I think he's used to, to not always being the most mm. supported player. Absolutely. But look, there's a chance. As Jimmy Connors used to say, that's why they put up the nets. The other semi-final, though, the first one, uh, Matteo Berrettini and Hubert Hercatch both looking for their first Grand Slam uh, final appearance and both really carrying the hopes of a nation on their shoulders. No, we've not seen many Italians nor many Poles around these parts. No, I mean, looking at Italians and Matteo Berrettini, he just doesn't fit the mould of Italian tennis. It, it, you know, players in Italy, when they're juniors coming up, they play mostly on clay, slow hard courts. They tend to be camped way behind the baseline. Yeah. They like to keep the rallies long and they don't tend to perform that well here on the grass at Wimbledon. You just look at the likes of Fognini, uh, Andrea Seppi, you know, that kind of era of player. The, the, their best results came on clay. Berrettini is cut from a completely different cloth. He's a big guy, he's got a big serve. He's good on grass. We saw him win Queens. I mean, arguably, he is the form player on grass coming into Wimbledon this year. He's won the most matches. I mean, he's kept that form going. Um, so it, it is big for Italy to have a player like him who can do well on grass. In terms of Poland, you know, Hubert Hercatch is just a, he's, he's a celebrity there, isn't he? He's a, he? Again, he's similar to Shapovalov, quite self-deprecating his interviews, comes across well. And what an opportunity for, mm -hmm. as we said before, you know, they weren't even playing in the main draws no. of Grand Slams three years ago. So an opportunity to play, you know, likely against Djokovic, one of the greatest players that ever lived on centre court in a Wimbledon final. I mean, you've got to be looking forward to that. When you mentioned form, Berrettini's won all 10 matches he's played on grass this season. Hubert Hercatch had lost six matches in a row mm. coming into this. He's turned it right round. I think the thing for Hercatch is where he is mentally. Will he have got over beating Roger Federer on centre court? He got through that match against Daniel Medvedev in the round before. So he's played brilliantly here. But will he have had the time to think, OK, right, I beat Federer, one of my heroes. That's behind me now. I need to produce again against Matteo Berrettini. And I think if there's a player who's going to have to come up against some pressure it'll be him because he's going to walk back out on centre court and think right I've got to do it again to get into the final and just before we let you go if I had to push you for a prediction of who we're going to see in the final on Sunday who would you say I'm going to say no upset 
in Djokovic, Shapovalov, Djokovic in straight sets. But I think, I, I don't know where the odds are saying Berrettini and, and Hercatch is going, but I think we were siding with Berrettini mm. just the way we were talking here. But I'm going to say Hercatch. I think it'll be a Djokovic, Hercatch final. Interesting. We'll have to see how it goes. And much appreciate your time. As always, if Berrettini does make it to the final, we finally have an answer. No country has ever done the Eurovision and men's singles title at Wimbledon double. So he could make history. I'm there. not no. singing for you. Oh, I'm not singing for you. There you go. We can take a cake instead. No, much appreciated. Uh, as we trailed earlier on, I spent yesterday following exactly what one of these goes through every single day here at the Championships. The most important thing during the championships that you probably never even think about are these, the tennis balls themselves. They're a lot more complicated than you might think and we're going to show you what one of these goes through every single day. So Ben, take us through the life cycle of one of these on a daily basis at Wimbledon. We've got a lot of players, so they start with practice the week before the championships, so the tennis balls will start arriving then. We get through approximately 54,000 tennis balls over the course of the two weeks. Wow. I have to ask, when they all arrive on site, they all get distributed out to all of the courts yeah. every single morning? They do, yeah, and they have to be kept refrigerated as well. So Why? Uh, it's to do with the pressure of the tennis ball. So inside the tennis ball, it's pressurised gas. So it's not oxygen, it's, it's a combination of gases. So they keep them in a pressurised tin and keep them cool to stop that gas from being able to escape. So those tennis balls that are used are used on court for uh, initially seven games. Then I change them, then nine games. What happens if you lose one? What right. if someone has a big smash and it bounces way out of the court? Okay, well obviously if this is Wimbledon we have a rule in place for that. What we ask of you, if you find a tennis ball, if you're sitting by the side of the court and you catch a ball, you give it back to one of the ball boys or girls who will you know, then put it back into play. If it gets hit way out and they can't get it, then we have these special tins called 357 tins. And so if you can imagine you know, the mathematics of this, you've got matches you've got matches that are finishing before that nine games has been completed. So if a match is finished and only three games of those nine games has yep. been finished, that's a three ball. And if five games has been completed, then that's a five ball and seven, et cetera, is a seven ball. We put those in and then the closest number of games to the ball that you lost the three five or seven games is then returned on play wow. so that it plays in the same way as the balls that are in play because if you gave them a brand new ball it would bounce higher it would, it would travel faster through the air and the players would get injured potentially and um, once those tennis balls are used they get taken back to ball distribution who will engrade them if they're fine and they've still got as you can see on your ball there the the logo on them right and the there. date and it's still clear. They get put into tins, they put an X on them and those tins are brought here to the used ball championships, Ball's Hut, where we sell them for a pound each for, to raise money for the Wimbledon Foundation, which is the official charity of the All England Tennis Club. So Rachel, when all the balls have been used in matches, they come here and they're resold. That's right, so the balls come here to the used balls kiosk where we sell them for a pound a ball and all of the money comes to the Wimbledon Foundation, which is the charity of the All England Club and the Championships. Tell me a bit more about the Wimbledon Foundation. Where does the money go? So the foundation supports more than 100 projects a year, which are helping people facing a wide range of issues in their lives, particularly here in our local community of Merton and Wandsworth, but also projects nationally and internationally as well. So one project that benefited last year from the balls, actually, is a project called Rackets Cube. So they're working with children in our local community of Roehampton, just up the road, and they combine teaching children sport, but also doing maths tuition and providing a nutritious meal for those children. And as well as giving them a grant last year, we also sent them some of the 2020 balls that weren't required when the championships were cancelled. So they put together community boxes for families living on the Alton Estates in Roehampton. They contain fresh food, but also lots of activities for children to keep them occupied during lockdown. So the tins of tennis balls were one of the items that went into the boxes. Oh, that's fantastic. So it's every penny that is raised from the sale of used balls is going to a really fantastic cause and making a difference to someone's life. There you go. No better reason why you can't go home with the very piece of the championships yourselves. Well, right on cue, I just got a message from my friend saying, can you go and get me a Wimbledon <laughs> ball from this year to add to my collection? She's worked here for many years, so yes, I can. They're one pound if any of you are coming to the championships yeah, over the next couple of days. Yeah, and all obviously the money uh, goes to the Wimbledon Foundation. So yeah, yeah great little charity. Really, really good causes yeah. all around this area and throughout the UK and the world. Fantastic stuff.
Right, well, now I think it's time to announce the results from how many tennis balls can fit inside centre court. Mm. Let's remind you of our options. So it was A, 5 million, B, 290 million, or C, 875 million. It's quite a big range there, Danny. Yeah, <laughs> very tricky, I think. Very tricky because, like you said, centre court is huge, huge inside. Yeah. I'm sure if you've been here, you know just how big it is. But you've been voting all morning. And 65% of you went for 5 million balls. That's incorrect, I'm incorrect. afraid. Uh -uh. Because the correct answer was B, wasn't it? 290 million tennis balls can fit into centre court with the roof over. Only 25% of you got that one correct. Tricky one, that, I think. And then 10% of you went for 875 million. That's quite a big number. I mean, I'd like to see <laughs> how many... I guess balls can fill other courts with that. Maybe a couple of the outside courts as well. I think you can fill most of them and, with, and maybe with 875 million. Maybe it's centre court one, court two with 875 million. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it's a lot of tennis balls. I don't think there's enough here at the championships that we have for that answer. Right, next question we asked you was where was Coco gone? Yeah, she Pictured went full Carmen San Diego on this in one, this didn't picture. she? <laughs> um, so it was part one of her European photo dump. Where was she, Danny? Can you reveal where Coco Goff is in this picture? Well, there was a little clue in her caption, wasn't there? Those three, those three flags. She was in Spain. She was on Mallorca. She's in Palma. Which I'm told is absolutely beautiful. It is beautiful. It went a long time ago, but there. it's a place that you can now travel to, I think, um, which I'll be going as soon as I can. <laughs> OK, so again, a lot of you guys got that right, of course. And finally, mm -mm. we asked you to see if you can guess which tennis star was drawn in this picture. So we've had Kyrgios before, we've had Serena Williams, we had Steffi Graf. The person in this picture today, Danny, was... Well, let's have a look, shall we? I think this was a maybe a tricky one, but we did say it's an ex-player. Yeah. It's not She's somebody been here. who has been here. And I mean, she is an absolute legend around these parts, isn't he? I mean, we know the answer. It's one of the absolute royalties, I guess, around here. She was in the royal box yesterday. <laughs> it is, of course, Billie Jean King, absolute tennis royalty in the Royal Box yesterday, legend uh, of Wimbledon. Legend well of Wimbledon. Well done, everybody who yep. got that one correct. 39 Grand Slam 39. titles she achieved over her career. And Jenny Drummond, our reporter, uh, she went to catch up with her yesterday as well. And uh, Jenny asked her, who would you like to have to a dinner party if you could pick one person? She said, Her Royal Highness, Majesty the Queen. That would be quite an interesting you know party. I think it? she's one of the few people who could maybe pick up the phone to the Queen and actually get her to a dinner party. Yeah, I think she could. She actually met her before and she was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm not surprised. I'd love I'd love to be at that dinner party around that table. Absolutely. <laughs> well, we're pretty much at the end of our show today. Adam Hunt's already taken one of these. I think I might steal one too. Danny, where are you off to? What are you doing? Uh, well, I need to get hands on one of those muffins, I think, the way that they're going. Um, I'm not sure. I, again, doubles is on today. Doubles mm. and wheelchairs is really good fun if you've not watched it. Very fast paced. So I'm going to, I don't know, I might have a wander around the outside courts down by centre and see which one tickles my fancy. Well, maybe we actually hang around centre court because we'll be able to hear exactly what's happening inside centre court. Of course, it's the men's semi finals. Novak Djokovic is up against the young 22 year old Canadian in the form of Denis Shapovalov, looking to be only the second ever Canadian to make it through to the Wimbledon final. I cannot wait oh, for that one. Absolutely. Listen, you shouldn't need any hyping, should you, for that match. You shouldn't need anything to get yourself up for. It's exciting <laughs> enough already. But just in case you do need something a little extra, we'll leave you with this. <laughs> 315 Grand Slam singles wins. 41st Grand Slam semi-final you're through. 10th here at Wimbledon. Obviously, I love this sport with all my heart and, and, and body and soul. You know, I've, I've been devoted to this sport since I was four. Going for history is, is a huge inspiration to me and, you know, let's keep it going. Obviously, he's the best player in the world. But I think anything is possible. And when, when you look at the scoreboard, you know, for first thing on Friday, it's going to be 0-0, you know.